This is the Curse of Oak Island and Beyond live stream. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, the Curse of Oak Island and Beyond live stream. Tom and Jeff, here did you forget where you were? Did you forget where you were? <laughs> just for a second. <laughs> How you doing, Tom? Is it snowing up there? Just yet? great, just great. Yeah, it's been snowing all day. The uh -oh. heavy snowfall warning a little bit north of me. Yeah, uh -oh. it's just you know typical maritime weather moving in. But <sighs> myself, you know, never felt better. Had had less or wanted more. So. <laughs> yeah, I heard you say something about a snowplow earlier. I was like, what? yeah, snowplow. Going by the house here, yeah. So, of course, <laughs> the dogs have got to chime in on that first snowplow every year. So. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I hope we keep the snowplows away from here for a little while anyway. Hey, everybody, welcome and thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we are here, of course, to talk about the uh, episode number three of season 11, A Curse of Oak Island. Uh, you know, man, I'm I'm loving this season so far. I, man, I mean... Maybe I've maybe I've learned to pick apart the information more or dig deeper or something, but yeah, you know, the, the clues that we're getting and the, the stuff that we're mm -hmm. being able to pick off now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We haven't hit any dead air yet. Let's put it that way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know there probably will be some episodes as we go down the road here and get into January or whatever. That'll be a little bit of a filler type stuff. You know, there usually is a few of those, mm -hmm. but uh, not yet. Not yet. It's mm -hmm. uh a little disappointing, I gotta admit. I was a little disappointed at part of the show last night, but we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, one thing I did want to mention too was that um, in the process of working on this uh, room here that I'm in, I I got a, a special gift that was given to me some time ago um, by my good friend Jan um, Anderson, who does this awesome synopsis for us. Gotta have one, folks. Gotta, Gotta have, one. have it. And it's there. She puts them up on the in our page and everything. So they're they're listed on our Facebook group page. Um, but I also have this. And I've been trying to get, you know, I did order a frame for it because this needs to be in a frame, and I hate not having it in a frame. But um, this right here. Oh wow. Yeah. So very this nice. is, yeah, the Curse of Oak Island, and it's it's so awesome, and I try to be very careful with this thing because I don't want to damage it, but I ordered a frame for it, and it turns out the frame was too small because I thought I knew the size and I was wrong, but then I'm thinking, where am I going to put it in here? This would be the perfect wall right here, but of course, nobody could see it, so it's going to have to be on this wall right here. You can point the camera hard. that way anyway and just talk, and we can, we can look at the picture. <laughs> they would rather look at that than me anyway, so why not, right? So, um, ah, yeah, I tell you, but I, you know, for those of you who, um, for those of you who have watched, um, the beyond Oak Island, which I don't know that they did any, we haven't heard a word about it, uh, for this next season. I, nobody's talked about it. We haven't heard anything about beyond Oak Island, but I was really enjoying it. And I was really enjoying the whole treasure hunting of different things. And I did talk to a gentleman yesterday. He's been on the podcast before he was on uh beyond oak island captain joe ziga if you guys remember captain joe down in florida um i was on the phone with him yesterday he and i was talking and i've gone out treasure hunting with him a little bit matter of fact in the episode that they were in down there on the in the park uh down there by anclote island um tampa just north of tampa i was actually able to go there and metal detect uh with him um, and some other folks that were there, and uh, and also uh, Mike Gattuso, who was also in that episode with him. So I got a chance to, I was on the phone with Captain Joe, and he has some really cool stuff coming out um, really soon. So we're going to have, um, hey, Richard. <laughs> oh, with them. Oh, ooh, look at that. Richard, call your cousin, Jeff, with dimensions for the poster. Yes, I will. <laughs> All right. I never even thought that you would, uh, you know, jump out. Uh, see make that. Sure, make, make, make sure you measure it twice because your first effort didn't work out too well. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I was trying to go on memory and <laughs> that didn't. <laughs> Yeah, Richard's watching. That was Christina. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, you like that? I that's was given to me right off of his back. Um, but yes, Richard, uh, if you notice that clock that is above Tom's head there, uh, that says Oak Island, it's Oak Island time. Yeah. And that clock, those are made by cousin Richard, uh, that's in the chat there. And uh he makes those. If you want to, you know, if you want to get one of those uh <laughs> measure twice order once <laughs> <laughs> yes i know i know i was trying to go on memory it was a long time and i thought i remembered but i thought it was two by three but it's not it's actually bigger than that but yes i will get a hold of richard with the dimensions and uh yeah <laughs> there she is so uh so anyway captain joe has got some really cool stuff coming up and we're gonna have him back on the show uh, there's some, there's a TV station down there. He told me what it was in a Fox, something or other down there in Tampa area that is going to come out with part of this story that he has. And, uh, but we're going to have him back on the show and Christina and I need to make a run to Florida because he wants me to come down and help him out. So, um, when I can get down there, I don't know yet, but we're going to try to do that. So be watching for that. Um, you know, and, uh, let's see here also, oh, we have a giveaway tonight. Uh, also and, and again we do we started doing these giveaways because people were giving us stuff to give away and we thought no, we will just keep it going because it seemed like folks were enjoying it so for tonight uh we are going to be giving away this uh sports illustrated uh magazine now this is um let's see this is from uh 1957 january 14th 1957 and if you notice right here and i'll try to zoom in on that a little bit it says also in this issue, where to find pirate treasure. And there's a portion of it that talks about Oak Island and the Oak Island money pit in here. Now, this was given to us by uh, Jeffrey Irving. No, not Jeffrey Irving. I thought that was Jeffrey Irving. Okay, Linda said no, that's not Jeffrey Irving. I thought it was Jeff. Um, anyway, so we got this uh, magazine and uh, we're going to be giving it away tonight. Now, to uh, how you do this to get these giveaways is you must be a um you must be a member of our facebook group page which is the curse of oak island and beyond hyphen oh linda donated okay um the curse of oak island and beyond hyphen skinwalker ranch um, you can find us there. there's a link down in the description below and linda will puts up the picture of what this is um what our giveaway is for the upcoming week and as a post, and all you have to do is, is say yes as a comment to that post, and you're automatically entered. Uh, oh, I bought it and donated. Okay. Oh, Jeff suggested it would be a good one. That's where I got his name from on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry about that. Um, so that's our giveaway for tonight, and uh, we'll do a spin on that here in just a little bit so we can uh, give that away. And I've got some, I've got some uh, things that he gave me, some magazines that he gave me that are really old, which... Uh, I really, uh, I really love those when he, he gave them to me as a birthday present. That was really cool. Um, let's see. Okay. One thing I wanted to mention too, and Tom, Tom brought this to my attention, Tom and Linda. Um, you know, as we go through the show and I was questioning this last night myself, uh, I was in the discord channel and we always go through these, um, things where you talk about on the, where they talk about on the show about the permits and the permits are issued, uh, you know, and you're, we're in. So last night I'm like, where's Dumas? Where's Dumas? Where's Dumas? Why aren't they already there? And they're waiting on permits. And so I thought, well, oh, geez, why didn't they, you know, ask for them during the winter? It's not that simple. That's not the way it works. And I know Tom, you have a little bit more information about this than I do. Yeah, well, number one, thanks to Scott for jumping in on our group page today and kind of clarifying that for people. But Scott Barlow, uh, yeah. my former life, I used to be responsible for a lot of capital works projects, branch construction, branch renovations, things like that. And, it, you know, when you say permit, well, permits, the end result of all the other stuff that you had to do to get there. Mm -hmm. So you may have had to go through like I'm not familiar with underground stuff, of course. But the above ground stuff, you may have to go through city councils, town halls, engineering reports, specification, changes to specifications, contracts, designs, um, budgeting. You know, budgeting could be a big, a big component of any project. So they finished up in November. That's when their last permit ran out. Well, is there going to be a season 12? We don't know yet. 
we haven't contracted these guys. We got to contract them. They have to get their people lined up. Mm -hmm. They have more than one project on the go. They have to have the manpower available. If you need to bring in a specialist of any type to do stress loads or whatever, yep. if that specialist is not available either on the government side or the contractor side for a month, you just lost a month. Yep. Nothing moves, nothing changes, nothing happens. They could have other projects on the go, vacation, manpower. Um, there could be changes. You could send in a plan. One person comes back and goes, no, I don't like that. Send me another plan. Mm -hmm. Well, if your guys are already working on something else, it could be two or three weeks before you get to that plan. So it's not a matter of just sending in a piece of paper and saying, you know, can I build something? Right. And they come back and say, yeah, sure, go ahead. Right. You're, yeah. you know, you're a general contractor. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it and, uh, months, Scott and, did, and yeah, Scott did jump in on that, and I was going to read what he said. We had it. This was in our Facebook group page. Uh, Scott had, uh, and people were asking, why didn't they apply for him sooner? And he replied, the code of practice, a code of practice isn't just permit. There is a lot of engineering and load calculations that have to be done by multiple parties. Every object that is used in the endeavor, uh, from electrical above ground to every individual airline uh, fitting, needs to be uh, incorporated into this process and approved for use. This mm -hmm. permit was six months in the making. Six months in the making. So yeah. there you go. If, if you've thanks, ever seen a set of a set of blueprints for uh, a building construction, commercial building construction, mm -hmm. it's like that thick. Yeah. Because there's plumbing, electrical, weight load specific, like it's just layers and layers and layers. So I can only imagine how hard it would be to think that you're going to try to tell, explain to somebody yeah. how you're going to go underground and try and build a tunnel non-virgin <laughs> non -virgin land, right? Yeah. Or do anything yeah. that's been riddled with holes and tunnels and shafts for years. Yep. And the load specifications and like, it just boggles my mind. Yeah, I agree. So we really appreciate for uh, Scott to jump in on that in our Facebook group page. And uh, um... <laughs> hey, Tom, Movember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we really appreciate uh, Scott jumping in and uh, explaining that a little bit because I, you know, I was on the, I, I was on board with that too. I was thinking, man, why didn't they? Yeah, but they did. They do. No, there's just the little list that I came up with, you know, in yeah. a matter of minutes yep. from my previous life this morning yeah. of things that have to happen for an above ground construction to take place. Yep. Yeah. So I can only think that all of that has to happen plus more. Yeah, plus more. Yeah, so I don't know. That's it's it's pretty. Got to get crazy. that done in six months. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. So yeah, to get it, yeah, to get it done in six months. That's mm. pretty crazy. So, all right. Um, with some of that out of the way, I also wanted to say for those of you who um, you know want to help support the show, I appreciate the patrons that we have. You saw that in the little clip I had at the beginning. Thank you so very very much to the patrons that we have here, uh, because unfortunately this does cost money to do this, uh, put this podcast on. So, but I appreciate that very much. And I do have some things that we have that you other ways you can help. Uh, you can do a super chat during the show tonight. Um, you can, I got a PayPal account if you want to help donate to that. We've had that up there before, but also we have some t-shirts and hats and things like that, that you can purchase. They are on the website. That's, that's yeah. really nice. And they're embroidered. Yes. Really yeah, nice. Embroidered. Hats. Yep. And it's uh, jfree906.com. Uh, uh, jfree906.com you can look there and you can see the hats and there's also the tumblers but i don't have mine out handy tonight but uh we also have the tumblers that you can uh, get there too those come from blue6laser.com um jess grolo makes those and she does a fantastic job with those so there's a different ways you can help if you'd like to help support the show and we appreciate that all very very much um so we are here tonight to talk about season 11 episode number three taking their shot um, so let's get started with that. Um, right off the bat, you know, I, I love to show my pictures. So there's the, uh, the logo there. I always put the logo in place because that heles me know where to start. Uh, believe it or not, I have way too many pictures. I'm, I don't know, eight or nine. Can't imagine it. <laughs> you, know, you get all the ones you take, then all the ones we send you. So, yeah. yep. And there's a beautiful aerial shot of the, uh, of the island that uh, I love those uh, very much as well. Um, and here they are working in the money pit and that's where things start off on the show. Thank you, Craig. That's awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. kicking off the super chats. All right. appreciate that, Craig. Um, so yeah, so they start off in the money pit and you got the guys up there and they are 
working at the time, they're they're pulling out the casing for the uh, D.5N 25.5. Um, they're getting that casing out of the ground. That's the one that they did last week. And then they're getting ready to begin drilling on D.5N 24.5. And as you know, they're chasing this tunnel that's underneath that they, they, this is the first time we've seen them look on the, on the up, uphill side from the garden shaft. Last season, they spent all of their time down in the uh, baby blob and the blob area and working all that and finding this tunnel. So now they're up on this high side up above where that just right around the area where they crane would normally sit. Um, and they're digging that. And I think, you know, you know, some people again are talking about the factor. Why are they, why are they bothering with this? Well, they want to make sure that it's there and how far does it extend? And we talked about that a little bit last week when I, we, uh, Craig and, and helped us out. I think Ryan, um, it was a Ryan that actually helped us out with the line showing it going all the way from Smith's Cove. If it were to extend that far, it would go all the way from Smith's Cove down to the southeast corner of the swamp uh, where the Stone Road is. Um, if it were to extend that far, we do not know that for sure. But uh, if it were, then that's Brenda. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Really do. I know you work hard for that too, Brenda. Thank you. Um, so, so they're chasing this tunnel. Now, what may be some of the significance of this? I mean, you know, Tom and I, you've, you and I have talked about this before. Yeah. You know. If you're going to spend that kind of money to send those guys from Dumas down there, to get them to go through all the time and the hassle, to get down another 20 feet, which is what they're going for. Yep. Which is going to put them roughly on about the same level as this tunnel. Yep. And you're going to get those guys to dig that way. That's a pile of money to spend. You, you better be sure there's something down there. You know, putting Marty's hat on for a second. Yeah. You better be sure there's something down there worth digging for. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it is, Dean. We're getting to that here. But, yeah, that's exactly correct. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, to DN, our D.5N 24.5 is the hole that they're dig digging now during this episode last night. And you can see it right there. It's the one in red. And, again, they're chasing this tunnel that runs underneath the garden shaft and like tom just said you know that the garden shaft went down they went down to the bottom of where it was before which was to 82 feet 82 feet yep now they need to go another 20 cliff mm -hmm. thank you sir i appreciate that thank you so much um so now they need to get down now if in before they were chasing that tunnel across the uh what is that dn 12.5 and all of that and they were mm -hmm. hitting it what about 96 feet? 96 in that range yep. yeah right around that range so um okay i just found that like oh okay um so they were hitting that around that area so now they're on the uphill side and want to make sure they're still hitting that tunnel and they are okay so that's that's really significant and we'll get to um that. The other thing too with that with that tunnel just for a second, that little mm -hmm. five minute clip that you did the other day there was it yesterday yes. the day before with Doug Crowell. Yeah. And Jack and Steven standing in the money pit. Yep. What direction was he pointing in? He was pointing right up there where they're at. Yep. Right up where they're drilling right now. And mm -hmm. something he had said, and I got some some people jumped in on me going, you know, making a comment about that about editing. But he didn't, that, there was no editing. Whoops. There was no editing in that portion that he had said. He pointed that direction. Yep. And he said the money pit up on the other side of, or on the, on the other backside of the garden shaft. Yep. And I thought, was that a, was that a slip? Do they know already that it's, because I had speculated about, and now I was talking about it being a little bit more to the north. Mm-hmm. You know, this not, was all based on where it was supposed to be, according to Smith Foundation, right? Yeah, yeah. So he did. And which way his house was supposedly oriented? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I noticed that the money pit wasn't behind the house; it was where you could see it out the front door. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm. That's that's the thing that I and I, he said that, and he was pointing right, there, mm. right where the drill rig was, or right. Well, act actually at that point, that's uh, yeah, where the drill rig was, but. I don't know. I was thinking that if there was going to be an offset chamber, it might be up there underneath the mm -hmm. hill. So I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. And and I got some more to talk about on that in, in just a few minutes, but uh, so 
let's jump over now to the war room. Um, the guys went to the war room next. Um, and th there's just another shot of them uh, drilling right there. You see the little dirt? See how they had to add? Because because you remember when, uh, before we get to the war room, you remember when Steve said something about that's as far as we can go to the east. Mm -hmm. And I think he meant that, yeah, if not, I mean, they're going to be going down the hill. They can't do that, obviously. They can't get the, the crane or the uh, drill rig down there. Um, Kat says, I wonder if the crew has thought about if the tunnel extends across the island, does it connect to those two shafts on the southeast corner of the swamp? And the other is Smith's Cove, the one they found. Mm. I think it connects to the one in Smith's Cove, to be honest with you. Yeah. We, we'll talk about that in a bit, too. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it, it's in a certain transcript. <laughs> that they took pictures of last night. Yeah. Yes, they did. There was a lot of clues in the show last night. I think that, yeah. If you if you watch it a couple of times, like Tom and I end up mm -hmm. doing, um, you picked up on. I picked up on a few other little tidbits of uh, information. So, um, yeah. So we're gonna. But you know, that's as far as they could go to the east because otherwise they're going to be down the hill into the uh, woman's memorial there. So that's about as far as they can go. Ten X connected. I wish it were, and I think that they're – I'm still on board, uh, Kate, with with Brian Abbott from Abbott Underwater Acoustics. Uh, he's the one that put that sonar device – I think it was a sonar device of type mm -hmm. that he put down into 10X, and it was down there doing its scanning. And he said, from what he saw down there, that it looked like there was a tunnel that went out the north and the south ends mm -hmm. of 10X. Now we know that the diver went down there. John Chatterton went down there and he said, no, nope, no, nope, no tunnel. But then he also said, what, he only yeah. explored, what, he, 10%? It was less than, I, I'm going to say 10, but I know it was less than 20 for sure. Yeah. And he didn't say that on the show. He admitted that on a later interview. Exactly. So, you know, and and I talk, I've talked to Abbott since then, and he said he still stands by the fact that, according to his scan, something heads out of both ends. So it's 235 feet deep, 235 feet deep. So that's much deeper than, you know, than, than what we're at now. Cause right mm. now we're at the same level where, where the drill rig is. Yeah. Yeah. They're 110. So I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, and they didn't turn up. What does that say? We didn't turn over the bag with the info. Oh, the bag was little, yeah. No, they didn't. Mm. That just goes <laughs> to support our timeline. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right. So let's see. So, uh, yeah. And you know, um, they, they also, they jumped over to the, uh, to the war room and this is where they got a little bit of information from, uh, Craig, Craig's the data guy and Craig got some data on the C14 testing that was done on a piece of wood. Remember when they had those two pieces of wood laid out on the table and they were talking about this was over in the interpretive center and they were talking about was there any content of gold or silver or anything like that in those pieces of wood there was not but then there was a content of palladium mm -hmm. in them which is and again i it's are co commonly found with excuse yeah, it's found me. in found in certain areas near or with gold yeah right so they got the, the uh, C14 testing done on the piece of wood from D.5N26.5, which is the one they did a couple on the, on the uh, premiere episode, I believe it was. Um, and Marty came over there, and so they, they test, tested it, and they found that 55.6% uh, dated from 1735 until 1804. Mm -hmm. So... And then 25%, roughly 25% from 1656 to 1684. Yeah. So if you put those two together, well over 75%, 80% saying it's from 1656 to 1804. So mm -hmm. that's that's pre-searcher. Yep. Now you the know, other 18, thing too that can, that's sprang into my mind with the 1656 to 1684 was Phipps. Phipps. The yeah. rumors that he had a ship in there, scuttled a ship to use to hide stuff. Right. And remember the, 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 timber, the timbers would have been cut down long before. Exactly. They, 1687, I think, is when they actually right. discovered the silver and started bringing it back to England. Yep. So the timbers to make those ships would have been presumably cut down several years before that. Exactly. And that's the thing about, you know, and there's been a lot of discussion. I've seen in Reddit and stuff like that. There's been a lot of discussion going on about the C-14 dating. 
The C14 dating, folks, if, if you're not familiar with that, and I'm not an expert on this, but I've done some reading on it. C14 dating tells you that the day that the tree died. Mm -hmm. Now, that tree could have been cut up in planks and used for a ship. And then the ship was, like Tom just said, scuttled later. And then that wood was repurposed and used for something else. We don't know any of that information. All it tells us is the day that the tree died. Gives That's, you ranges. Well, you, you know it's not from the 1800s. Right. Or 1900s. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, it said something about the 1900s, but it was like a minuscule. Oh, little, yeah. It's like it, a small amount. Yeah. Not even really uh, worth talking about. And they that's why they didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also talks about the Duke D'Anville uh, expedition that was set off in 1746 to come and take Lewisburg back from the English. Mm -hmm. And we know that that was a failed mission. It never made it a lot of the ships didn't even make it um the anvil died i think too during yeah, he, that well he he went missing he never showed up or whatever so exactly so what happened to him uh we don't know but it also covers that range right there so you know that makes uh doug Crowell's, uh you know talking about duke the anvil that also makes that very much more uh plausible yep when you figure this into that whole that whole thing. So, you know, what, what, uh, I don't know. Is this a good time to jump into that, Tom? You want to? Sure. Wanna... Let's go. So Duke D'Anville, as you know, Tom, um, you know, Tom has some, uh, some things for us here to talk about, but that expedition was sent because they were the, uh, Lewisburg was taken by the, uh, taken away from the French by the English. They took it over. And so the, the, the French were not happy about that. So they sent, they put an armada together and they duped the anvil. And they sent it back across to go and retake Lewisburg back from the, the Brits. Okay. So they came back across and they talked about Doug Crow talked about a ship's log. He's read it on the show several times. And, and last night they talked about it again, but this time, we got to look at a few more pages of this thing than we have before. They flipped the pages down one by one that you could take a screenshot of them. Yes. Yes. Now, admittedly, it's not the original document. It's a translation. That's somebody, yes. Somebody's translated Dina. it to English. Wow. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Dina. You guys are really wow. awesome tonight. Thank you so much. You get, you really get your own good. treasure run going on here. Your own. Ah, man, I appreciate it. I really do. It's, uh, you know, like I said, unfortunately, it costs money to do this. And I just, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But I we, all, we most often hear Doug talk about, you know, and they had this discussion and it was decided that a deep pit or great pit be dug. Yes. And that's pretty much all we hear. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you go through and take screenshots of each page when they when Oops. they flip it, when they flip it down. Right. There's a, a lot more interesting detail in there. Right. And I, I won't get into all of it, but if you want to go back through, I mean, we, we could post those flips of the pages I put on, too, and say, you know, going through yep. all of it. Yep. But um, on page two. It talks about the great quantity of treasure on this vessel makes it unwise to jeopardize it in any way to fall to the enemy. So they're going to hide it. Right. Right. Um, what else did I have? And we talk about all the wood they found on the island. On page three, if I can find it here. Uh, work began. That Just give me a second here. Yeah, no. Okay. It's, it's, in in, in right. the afternoon... The afternoon was spent, this was a couple days later in September. The afternoon uh, it was spent paying the men and paid up for, for, for something in stores for, I think it's D Donvi, right? Mm -hmm. And he paid 50 men who were cutting down trees on a small island. Right here, 50 men ashore cutting down trees on a small island. You wonder where the wood came from? <laughs> And 50 men, yeah. And, like, and yeah, the wood that could 50 men could cut down over a couple of days, yeah, exactly. Right, yep. Uh, what else did I have written yep. down? Cutting a down, deep okay. pit be dug, that's what deep, it says right here. Dug. Yep, and then when you go to I think it's page four, all right, where does it say? Uh, maybe it wasn't page four. Anyway, I won't bother because it's just wasting time here. But anyway, they talk about uh, his manpower mm -hmm. to dig this pit was to use 200 men over 15 days. 200 men. So think about it. 200 men, 15 days, just the logistics to have those people there. 
fed water and and and, and looked after mm -hmm. right um they also dug two shafts they talk about digging two shafts mm -hmm. one down to 92 feet yep right uh, the shaft was going to be, and the other one, and at, at 67 feet, they they needed to decide they needed to go deeper. Right here, yeah. Because they were passing through uh, soggy ground or, or mm -hmm. wet ground. At at 80 feet, water was still coming in. They also passed through a layer of rock. Mm -hmm. So we think back to last week when they talk about a broken chisel. Yep. Uh, they dug a separate pit uh, to try and get air in. They used 35 men for that. Uh, at 92 feet, they found that the, the soil was drier. Yep, right so here. They get, down, they, they get down to 92 feet, right? Mm -hmm. And they also talk in the earlier pages about an attack on Annapolis, which would have been Annapolis Royal, Digby, on the other side of Nova Scotia, which was originally a French settlement. Champlain settled it. And, uh, and he also talks, I think, on page one, about a great quantity of treasure yeah yep right and that don, don view was nowhere in sight yep so yeah so we'll post those on the page and people can look through it and you can draw your own conclusions yep but a lot of interesting information in yeah there. and and a lot more than we've ever heard on the show yeah um and that's and that's the key now yes mm -hmm. these are a translation i would love to see the original mm -hmm. ship's log um and i don't know if that can be found doug I don't know if Doug just found this. I think uh, he just. I just. I think he just found the translated log. Yeah. Yeah, but man, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you love? I would love to see that the original log. Um, it blew me. It blew me away. Fifty men cutting down trees, and then 200, 200 men assigned to the digging project. Right. So we've talked about that before. We've said how many people would it possibly take to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And there it is. I mean, you think about 200 men working, and now these 200 men, they're going to need fresh water. They're going to need a place to shelter, a place to cook and, you know, and do all that kind of stuff. They're going to need privies and everything else. So, and that kind of correlates, if you think about it, though, dating of the wood. This is something that Jack said on the show last night. The dating of the wood that was in the, uh, in that gar in that shaft, the uh, DN.526.5, and then also the dating of the artifacts that they're finding over, which was the circle feature in lot five that now they're calling something else. Just, well, we'll keep calling it the circle feature because yeah. we don't know what else to call it for now. But the dating of those artifacts also about that same time frame. Yeah. The, the other thing too, and somebody's point earlier about how far away did these tunnels go to the shore? Yeah. Making plans for a secret tunnel from the shore to the treasure chamber. I mean, if you need the plot, the, the script uh, for the plot, there it is. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so all kinds of neat stuff in there. We'll post it anyway. You can have yeah. Okay. Linda just put up uh, Duke D'Anville died and was buried in Halifax Harbor at uh, or St. George's Island. Four years later, his body was moved uh, to Fort Lewisburg, where it was, is today. There you yeah. go. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, uh, Jeff, for bringing that up. I wanted to, I forgot about that. Happy Thanksgiving to all of those of us that in, the, uh, in the United States. I know we have a lot of people that yes. join us from up in Canada. And yours was back in October? Ours is the second Monday in October, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah. So, happy Thanksgiving to everyone uh, out there that's watching that's from the States. Mm -hmm. and you're going to be enjoying all that tomorrow. Um, appreciate the, that. And I know we're going to we've uh, the pies have already been started <laughs> oh they're done that's what i'm smelling <laughs> so, apple pie you need, like, to, you need to take a break you see like no <laughs> oh my gosh yes all right so as we continue okay on. so that's our that's our rant on the on the on the three pages that we never saw before didn't exactly. see before and, and so that is very important and I, you know and i wanted to mention also too that real quick that you know and and how often, and I and I and I'm very guilty of this. Um, how much time does the uh, Prometheus spend uh, looking back at stuff? The time they spend on every episode looking back to the past and talking about things that all of us that have been watching for the last eleven years, 
we know this stuff already. And I get, I'm like, oh, here they go again, you know, talking about, but you know, honestly, the other night we had uh, a guest here at the house. Uh, this was last week. We were watching the show and we, there we were going, oh, here they go again, talking about stuff when they went overseas and all that, all things we already know. And I said, well, he's never heard it. This is the first time he's ever watched the show. I said, he'd never heard it before. And he goes, yeah, I need to know these things. Okay. Yes, we understand that. But they do spend an awful lot of time covering stuff that we, and you know, and I kind of wish they would just keep on with the show, but it's, it's part of it. They're drawing that connection, right? Exactly. The other thing too, I don't know if I mentioned or not too, was that the uh, pit that uh, Donga's crew was digging was 12 feet in diameter as compared to the 13 feet that we're and normally a measurement inside diameter, time. outside diameter. <laughs> yeah. A measurement <coughs> can certainly change. Um, one thing too, I wanted to mention while we were talking about that war room was that um, if uh, Jack had talked about something that I hadn't heard before, uh, he mentions the dates of uh, 1656 to 1804 match the dates that they are getting from the circular feature in lot five and the deep location called site one. Do you know what that is? Have you ever heard of site one before? It's the first time I'd ever heard him use the term. Site one. Anybody out in the chat? Have you ever heard them talk about site one before? I haven't. Um, uh, so, <laughs> mm, pie. Yes, indeed. Uh, Linda chimed in. She said, "You, uh, you get uh, Duke D'Anville's log uh, from the archives, and I'll translate for you." Uh, get the okay. original. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's get those. I want those logs. I want to see the original logs. I think that'd be great. So, in in, in the show, you can see Doug holding the the photocopy of the of the pages, uh -huh. and then somebody had typed him. Somebody had actually, what he was reading, what Doug was reading from was that somebody had typed that all out for him by date date range. I tried to zoom in on it enough, but I couldn't get it. Yeah, I, I will repeat it, David. What he said was, uh, he said, uh, he mentions that the dates from 1656 to 1804, which was the, the wood that from the DN 26.5, uh, he said it matches the dates they are getting from the circular feature on lot five, which we know what that is, that circular feature, and the deep location called site one site one so i don't know what that is i don't know what site one is is that something new uh, yeah, well, unless unless right. like craig says it's that it's that wall that they found that they're considering deep maybe could be mm -hmm. i don't know but I thought that was, I, as soon as he said that, and then I heard it again, and I'm like, Meep. my antennas go up immediately. Uh, yeah, where's Guppy when we need him? Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, unless they were referring to where the money pit uh, was first found. I don't know. I, I really don't know. A deep, a deep location, deep location called Site 1. I don't know. Site 1 is on Lot 1, I think. <sighs> yeah. All right. Um, they jump back to the money pit real quick. They're looking at 24.5. There's only about 61 to 68 feet. That was the next segment in the show. Uh, Terry just notices they're very soft, uh, and they could be very close to a structure, which we know they are, um, because we get that in just a, a real quick time frame. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do the giveaway, Linda, if you'd like. Um, you ready for that? <laughs> we can do the giveaway real quick, and then we can continue on, Tom and I. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. All I right. Am, so, I am. Yeah. So the the, uh, the giveaway is the Sports Illustrated from 1957, did I say it was? It is January of 57. <laughs> January 1957. So it does have an article in there talking about pirates. Um, and it also uh, talks a little bit about the Oak Island money pit. So, right. I asked Jeff Irving about a year ago for some titles, some magazines, that would be interesting for the group, just different kinds of things. And he thought this one would be really fun. And it's fun because it's in Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. And we don't think about Sports Illustrated talking about pirate treasure. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> treasure hunting and the like, yeah, on Sports Illustrated. So 
Um, and by the way, Jeff Irving, by the way, Jeffrey Irving, he has a, uh, the, uh, what's, what's he called? The Oak Island library. Oak library. Yep. And it's really cool. There's a, we got a post for it in our, he, he, we talked to him about it again. He's done it before, but we had him come back and do a, uh, another post for us in our Facebook group page about it. Um, it is a really good resource. So you guys could check that out. Oak Island library, uh, and Jeffrey Irving. So it's really good stuff. So, all right. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm going to put you in solo layout here so you can spin away. All right. Oh, there's no sound on it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Hold it up just a little can bit. Can you higher. see it? Nope. Ah, there we go. All right. A little bit higher. A little bit higher. <clears throat> All right. We're wheeling down. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Craig, it was so close. And uh, Leland, what is it? Brock? Brock. Like can't that. quite see it all. Can't quite see it all. What do you sorry. got? Sorry. Oh, Brock. Oh, okay. Brock it. All right. And Anne's Leland here. Brock. Anne's here. Anne's here? Yep. All right. Oh, yes, and there you are. Yep. She said Highland a little bit ago. So there you go. You want it, and It's a Craig. You were so close. It almost stayed on your name. <laughs> <laughs> you were so close. Okay, so uh, in, um, and yep. if, and you if you will private message me your address, I will get this in the mail to you on Friday. All right. Congratulations, Anne. Good job. There you yep. go. Next week, there will be a book. Oh. That Jan Anderson has donated, written by Lee Restall Lamb. Oh, wow. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So we'll have that one for next week. So, and again, okay. if you want to be eligible, you have to join our Facebook group page. Uh, the link is down below for it. Join our Facebook group page. And then when Linda puts the post up for the giveaway, all you have to do is comment saying, yes, that's it. And you're automatically entered. So that's how she does it. And you have to be, you have to be here uh, to win it. You have to be present during the podcast to win. Otherwise, we draw again and go for another. We've done good since the first week. I know we had to go like three or four times last <laughs> time. <laughs> Nobody was here. It's like, oh, you missed it. Sorry. So there you go. All right, congratulations, yep. Anne. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Thank you, Linda. Yep. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so continuing on with lot five, um, now we've got uh, where Rick and Gary uh, head out to lot five to do some more metal detecting. And I tell you what, lot five just goes on and on and on, giving them all kinds of great stuff. Uh, as you know, and I'll show some of these pictures, remember last year when they were out on lot five and they found what we were, I was calling this a latrine. I don't know what this thing was. It's, I don't think it's a latrine. And I say this going by what Helen said in the preview for next week. Mm. Um, she's because her and the group are working on this particular spot right here. Uh, like I thought, I thought it was a latrine or a privy. Um, but Helen had said in this for then this is next year's. Yeah, take I think they do actually take that tree out of there. But Helen said in her 40 years of field work, I have. Not, I have seen, I have not seen something like this buried mm. like this before. So, and then, you know, and then Jack is standing there and he's like, why would they bother to bury something like this? Whatever this is, we don't know. But so if it's not a, if it's not a latrine or, you know, whatever, then um, yeah, I don't know what it could be. But anyway, if you remember that, and so they're back to working on this particular uh, spot. Um, and then of course you've got the circle feature on lot five that now has turned out to not be a circle feature. Um, and we found out that those stones that were put around in it in a circle was actually done by Robert Young, um, to preserve whatever was there. So that's why it had that circular appearance to it. Um, I just read the passage from a local book. I have paragraphs, uh, about the anvil, uh, talking about the dying sailors burying those already dead. Uh, they had the tools. <coughs> yeah, there you go. They definitely had the tools to accomplish what they were doing. So, um, so there's Rick and, uh, and, uh, Gary heading out, um, right off the bat, 1800 shovels, 17 pickaxes were on the first batch of ships to arrive. The batch duly missed. Wow. Wow. There you go. 
I had no idea. Oh my god! Neither, Neither did I. Now, could that pull off the type of operation that's on Oak Island and the manpower with all those tools? Yeah, probably could. Two hundred people can move a lot of earth. Yeah, pretty quick. And if they started in September, you know, so. All right, so um, so the guys go out there and they're metal detecting out here, and the first thing they find is a, a lead shot. Mm -hmm. uh, from a musket or a, you know, a, a blunder bust or something like that, a lead yeah, shot. Small, or just a flintlock pistol, maybe. Yeah. yeah. What were you saying, the caliber? <coughs> well, like yeah, the, 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 the caliber, I, a, fr a good friend of mine has been into black powder guns for a long time. He's a licensed gun dealer. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's really into this stuff. I sent him a bunch of these little shots, staying got him to look at them. And he said to him, it looked like about a 45 or a 50 caliber. Okay. Which yeah. I said, so I said, Kevin, is that, you know, a rifle or is it a handgun? He said, well, basically the handgun back then was a rifle with a barrel cut off. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he said, probably, he said, you can make an argument either way. He mm -hmm. said, you know, he said, it's not a super large one, but it's not small either. So right. he said it could have been a handgun or a pistol, flintlock type pistol or uh, or, or a rifle, mm -hmm. long gun. Yep. The, uh, the second item they found, and it, this kind of goes right along with this piece right here. So they find this piece right here, this shot, and then the next piece they find, whoops, I uh, got my pictures all mixed up here. Let me fix that real quick. But the next piece they find in lot five turns out to be uh, this little ditty right here. Uh, let me get this back up here. Right here. Okay. Now, there was a lot of speculation. They called Helen over so she could have a look at it. And she thought it might have, she figured it had something to do with a gun mm -hmm. or a rifle or something like that. And she said it might be a sight or something like that, which I can see where she would think yep. that. I didn't know. You know, we were looking at it. Mm -hmm. Turns out this little uh, jewel right here is actually, um, where did they find that part of a, flint? oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I tried to look that up today, but I couldn't, I couldn't recall where they found that. Oh, yeah, that's the one right. they put under the scanner last year, and they yeah, yeah. last year, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that was that was, so was French too, wasn't it? If I recall correctly, Renee. Yeah. I believe it was. I, was I, I meant to look it up today, and I get so tied up in reading this letter and a couple other things that oh, I, I, I didn't get remember. back to it. Does anybody remember where they found that uh, mechanism? It was the actual firing mechanism from a, a musket or a pistol or something like yeah. that that they found, and they scanned it last year, and I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, they didn't say. Oh. Okay, oh, man. Okay. You, uh, good catch. See, that's why I love you guys, Renee. You guys are awesome out there yep. bringing up these things. I had forgotten all about that. Uh, but this was an interesting find. And again, it ties back to that piece of shot. And also, it ties into this whole area. And if you go back to the Duke D'Anville storyline, then, and, and it, with the date range of this could be all right in there of this particular piece, but you find, you know, the pottery, the broken pottery, the different things that they found in that circular feature, but then also they find that shot and then they find this. It seems like some sort of an encampment of some sort, mm -hmm. maybe that they didn't even know existed because um, there was never any record of a house or a building ever put on lot five. So yep. um, yeah, they hinted at it being Portugal. Um, so interesting. So now this little piece right here, you know, everybody, you know, immediately when you find something like this and, and we all wonder where did it come from? Uh, everybody jumps on the bandwagon starting to look to see, you know, where could it be from? Uh, and Tom did, you know, Tom is no different. He did the same <laughs> thing, uh, jumped out there immediately to go find this. Now they did get this thing scanned and I do want to show the scanning of it. Again, we saw that. Uh, last last uh, week, they, they showed the uh, some of these scans. Here's one of them here. I like this one, but I like this one right here even better, this next picture. Now, yep. immediately, you know, we're looking at that and go, oh, it kind of looks like Roman numerals. And everybody, nope, nope, can't be no more Roman numerals. They didn't do Roman numerals like that. Well... Guess they did. <laughs> uh, guess they did. There was a time what they did, and an interesting tidbit about this. Uh, and we'll talk about this, you know, the layman of this thing in a minute. But Tom found out a very interesting thing when you were looking at this, and you talked to your uh, gun enthusiast friend. Mm -hmm. 
that he said about that mark right there, that mark would not have been something visible, correct? No, he said that mark, he saw, we, we were speculating as to why somebody would mark it like that. Is it some sort of somebody keeping a calculation? You know, how many other, enemy, how many of the enemies did I kill? How many deer did I kill? Mm -hmm. You know, is it some sort of, of, of tracking device? And he said, well, actually, he said, you know, depending on the type of gun, he said, you're not going to see that marking. Mm -hmm. He said, I think it's some sort of a mark where if, if it was, if they were guns that were being manufactured sort of en masse by a group of people to supply a military with, they needed to know who made what guns if they ever had to tear the gun apart or for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And he said that could very easily be maker number nine. Right. And he said, they put that component up underneath the stock of the gun. He said, you never see it unless you really look for it. But if you knew where to look for it, you could take the gun apart and that's what you would see. Yep. And, and the other thing he mentioned too, right. it was that uh, on this, on the, on the, uh, on the baggie, they say copper. He said copper would be an interesting thing to find out when they were making those uh, out of copper because he said most of them are made out of brass. Right. Yeah, exactly. So if you could nail down when they were manufacturing them with copper, he said that could narrow, really narrow it down for you too. Right. Now, yeah, it could be a maker's mark. That's true, Jackie. Mm -hmm. um, but here's something that I did not know. And so VIII -I 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 was actually used for nine. Uh, early uh, models did, in fact, use that for nine instead of IX. Um, however, these two numbers you can see right here, problematic. Um, they would get confused with one, you know, with three ones or instead of the original. So that's when they started. They switched over and they started using the subtraction not no, uh, notation. Subtractive notation, yeah. Which, yeah. So originally the number four would have been four I's. Right. And then they went to IV, five minus one. Right. Subtractive notation, right? Right. Um, and that, that, uh, the four eyes would have been used right up till the mid 1700s, depending on where you're from. Mm -hmm. So there again, 1700s, the middle 1700s keeps popping into play, doesn't it? Or earlier. <laughs> or earlier. Correct. Yeah. So, um, and then we, we did a little uh, looking into this thing and, f and you find it, you know, <coughs> excuse me. When you start looking on the internet for this kind of stuff, you start finding information about these things all over the place. Um, and it was as it uh, looked to be, and, and Laird talked about it later, as being a ramrod guide that would have been on a pistol or a probably a rifle, uh, a ramrod guide. And that's what this guy says here. And he talks about the brown bess, a uh, particular type of a long rifle, mm -hmm. muzzle, uh, long rifle that was used back then. Uh, and that one looks just like the one that they found. There's yeah. some other examples like this one here. Um, these, I, I'm assuming these are brass. They look like they're brass. Like they're brass, yeah. Um, brass would have uh, looked a lot nicer and not turned. You see that, that, that pinhole. You know, Laird said he'd never seen one like that before. Maybe maybe it's because he was referring to the copper component. I'm not, I don't know. Yep. But that pinhole, if you get the picture of the blunder bust I sent you today, that's how they affix it up into the stock. They yes. take a brass pin, tap it through there. And a lot of times that same brass pin, my, my gunsmithing friend was telling me tonight, that same brass pin would be used to hold the barrel in place as well. Yeah. To the stock. Yep. And here's one here. Uh, you can see it right here. You can see my mouse moving. That's one of them right there mounted into this particular rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see another one, a longer one up here in the front, but that's, that's where it would be mounted in the bottom of it. And if you, I can't zoom in enough, but there is a little pin right there. Yep. that would be driven through the wood that would then hold that into place. Yeah. And then also those marks, the maker's mark or that V, you know, nine or whatever it is would, and it could be, uh, you know, V I H I. I mean, some people have said that or V I N I, but mm -hmm. it looks like four mm -hmm. ones to me. Um, but that would be inside the, under the wood. So you wouldn't yep. see that particular uh, mark on there. So uh, interesting. I thought on that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the, then, the blunderbuss one there. It's yeah, got a really good picture of it. Yeah. Here you can see it right here. Yep. Okay, so there's one. So there you go. So obviously used. It was definitely uh, a, a part for a gun uh, or a rifle that was used back in that time frame. And so it, it makes sense that, uh, you know, um, again, you're looking at, a, I, I think, does that lead it to be a military encampment of some sort? 
possibly doesn't mean it is. It could have been a hunter. Could have been anybody on the island from about that time that still had an old gun that was using it. Um, and, and it simply, uh, you know, lost it or whatever happened to it. Who knows? Um, so I thought that was really interesting that uh, another piece like that was found. Um, so getting back to, uh, you know, lot five, I, I was really, you know, you'd start talking about the timing of things that are going on on the island and, and what's happening, uh, you know, all during these parts. Well, and Tom and I, we were talking about the fact that, you know, you know, when we saw those four things that were laid out on the interpretive table, interpretive center table last week, and they had the baggies upside down. So we, <laughs> and they, they, they figured out how we were, you know, finding out dates. They were onto us. They were onto us because Tom talked about it too much. I'm going to blame Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one we happened to catch. And there it is right there. So June 22nd of 2023. Uh, middle ramrod thimble it says copper right there made out of copper and it was found by gary drayton and rick lagina um so interesting that they, oh, i like under the lot 25 23 dash 600 yeah you see that right there remember last week we were up to 23 dash 200 or 300 or whatever it was 23 so in, that's in the, 600 the artifact artifacts yeah. found so far in june of 22nd and keep in mind you know when they find those little shards like they found in and you know that structure like that shards an artifact yeah yeah exactly you know, if they find 10 of them that's 10 artifacts yeah yep so you know another interesting thing you know and i thought as soon as i because i when i you know i when i made the travels to uh to nova scotia um and we were uh we were out there and I thought, oh, man, you know, wonder when they found that because uh, and I'm going to share this picture here real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of, you know, showing a little bit of my trip here. This is looking at lot five. This was when we were in Colin. You guys know Colin Jameson. He's going to be on the show probably next week. He's going to join us probably next week uh, for a little bit to talk about that episode. Uh, but this is a look at lot five right here. Uh, and this was on the 21st, the day before <laughs> they found that little that little mm -hmm. jewel. Uh, but I wanted to zoom in here because you see they are filming. This is looking at lot five from the water. And uh, you see there's uh, Steve standing right there. There's uh, over here is Laird standing right here. I think that's John Levy right there, uh, one of the producers standing right there. And right over here in the woods is Rick Lagina standing right there. And we saw Rick, we pulled up in the boat, we saw Rick over there, and at one point Rick was down on his knees and he was actually digging in a hole. And I thought, could he have well, could that have been what he found? And the answer was probably not, because it was the wrong day. Mm -hmm. So but they did find something. They did find something that day. And because Rick was over there digging, we just don't know what it was. So pretty interesting, I thought. Uh, so I wanted to share, share that real quick. Um, so, you know, the things you find when you, uh, in, in, when you're on these tours, mm -hmm. uh, also one of the things that we were talking about too, uh, let's get back over here, uh, to the episode. Okay. So they found that little piece of, of clay pottery that Tom just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that was also, now I don't know why this dropped out all of a sudden. My presentation. I thought that was uh, cr uh, creamware from the 1700s. There it is. Right 1700 there. seems to be a recurring. Yeah. Theme. Again, again, the 1700s. Yeah. Um, yep. And Gary dated that little piece from the 1700s. So, um, yeah. And this is where Helen actually, uh, and we had a new, a new person who seemed to yeah. uh, join the team that we didn't know anything about before. Um, and that new, uh, that new archaeologist, uh, Lindy. Was it? And I let's see. If I, I got Lindy. I got a little picture here of Lindy. There she is, right here. Uh, so Lindy, we didn't hear anything about Lindy before. When he first showed her picture, I thought that was, I thought it was uh, Emma. So die, yeah. Yeah, with a hat on. But nope, it's uh, Lindy Martin, archaeologist. So we got all kinds of people. Yeah, new face. All kinds of people showing up there, helping out Laird. And and why not? Right, because they have so many things to be hunting for and looking for out there. So. Welcome aboard to Lindy. We hope, uh, hopefully we'll see her uh, much more in the coming episodes. Uh, so, yeah, that creamware was found. 
Um, it was found and, in that, well, I'm going to call it a wall, whatever that deep depression was, they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yep. That was it there found. And every, and like Tom said, every one of these is labeled an artifact found. So you got 600 so far on June 22nd. And this was, that's one of the 600 probably or, or thereabouts. So, um, you know, but all of these things, folks, you know, and again, people get all, you know, oh, why do they have to keep finding wood or why do they have to keep finding spikes in the ground or whatever? All these things tell a story and they all, all, they're all little bits and pieces. They're all clues to something. And they're trying, that's what they're, they're searching for right now is they're trying they to, all, find they all fit somewhere in a timeline. It's just, where do they fit? Yep, exactly. All right. Um, one of the things that we talked about was Dumas uh, and Dumas will be coming out. We saw in the previews, they're coming out next week. They'll, so they'll be in the uh, next episode. And when I was there again, uh, we actually saw the uh, crane um, was actually when, when I was there and uh, we went around the island, we actually saw the crane was over on the road on the south side of the swamp and they were putting it together. Um, so there is a picture of the crane. So that that was uh, so the timeline is correct mm -hmm. on that. And then hopefully next week we should be around the third or fourth week of June. Uh, for next week's show, mm -hmm. and uh, the crane will be uh, getting set up. Because when uh, they were talking again. to the fellow from Dumas, he said they should have it by the end of the month. Right. So that was, I was thinking it was end of May, but no, it looks like it's the end of June. Yeah. And yeah. they were also smart because they, they broke it down into two the two missions. I, and in my yeah. opinion, they were smart. Yeah, talk about that for a second. Let's get the one to dig down, get that out of the way, right? We can get that finalized now. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get the other part for, you know, a week, two weeks, a month, whenever, right? So we'll, we'll work on the lateral part and get that done as a separate business case. Yeah. And I think that's smart because what yeah. would happen if they didn't, they get down to the bottom of the garden shaft at 98 feet and then they want to go sideways. They want to go, you know, uh, horizontal and, Oh, you can't, sorry, you got to get another permit. And now you're waiting for yeah. months. Or if you tried to do both under the same permit, yeah. then you, they could say, well, we're going to, we're okay with the vertical part, but we need to work on the lateral part. So, no permit. Yep, exactly. And then we'd be dead in the water and we dead wouldn't get any further. All right. So to round things up, they get out to the back to the money pit in the show. And this is where my excitement level went through the roof again, because they ended up pulling uh, this big chunk of wood out of the uh, borehole. This is the 24.5 borehole. Yep. Um, D5 yeah, the, N 24.5. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. What's and crazy is I'm starting to actually understand some of those numbers now. <laughs> Steve is getting to us with all these things. I know that uh, Deidre Copy hates effect. these things so much. Yeah, Deidre, uh, Deidre hates these numbering, mm -hmm. but you know it makes sense, right? So, um, so they find this piece of wood, and what does this piece of wood tell them? Now, in the show, they figured this out to be about seven and a half feet. So they're going down. They figured what happened was they were going down their drilling and they hit a upright, one of the uprights of the tunnel, uh, a post, a support, mm -hmm. an upright support in the tunnel down below at about 110 feet. And they hit it directly down the, the post somehow, but thankfully they did. They mm -hmm. hit it right down the post at seven and a half feet long. That's huge. That's that is, a yeah, lucky drill, Ray. You're exactly right. Lucky drill. Mm -hmm. Seven and a half feet high. Now, right off the bat, Steve's talking about a tunnel that you could walk in. And that's what they're thinking. And, of course, my speculative mind, how I love to speculate about things, my mind was originally going to, wait a second, what else could be that high? What else could be seven feet? Could that possibly be? a chamber mm -hmm. if the tunnel if most of the tunnels and rick said this most of the tunnels were three or four four to five three to five feet somewhere around yeah. in there high well, people weren't that tall i mean they were you know five, right five five and a half feet tall i mean they weren't tall like we see people today at six foot and more yeah right i think that this is the most exciting piece of wood after the ones that emma detected gold and you're right seth i, I agree with that mm -hmm. i i do agree yeah, and think that. about this when you look at that that at the Duke's letter or the Duke's logs letter, right? They were digging a tunnel to a treasure chamber. Correct. To a treasure chamber. Mm -hmm. Now, 
you know, so I, I'm thinking and that's where, that's where I went. My brain went, you know, well, maybe it's not a tunnel. What if this is a chamber? What if you actually went down the side of the chamber, Kevin, I'm going right there next. <laughs> so, and they talked about the ads that was probably used. It looked like an ads was used. I remember that ads yeah. is that, you know, tool that has a blade yeah. on it. That, they found them on the Island. Yep. Yep. They found the pieces on an Island. Uh, and they could chunk away on this thing. And that's what these look like. These little spots right here look like an yep. ads had been mm -hmm. used on it, cutting away on it. Um, then they put the camera down the hole. And I, they showed this. They teased us with this last week. Mm -hmm. That picture right there. They teased us with that last week of Steve putting the camera down that hole. And then came the big disappointment. That when they put the camera down the hole, they were going down, and you see that the, the the casing, there's the casing, there's the casing, looking good, looking good, looking good, and then black. Mm -hmm. Everything went black, and everything went black, and I, my heart just sank. I'm like, no, can't, well, don't tell me. I said, I'm I mean, thinking they, they they just dug a borehole down 106 feet. It's not going to be clear. It would be a fluke. I mean, there'd have to be some serious running water through there to make that clear that quick. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it could, it could be, but it went black. So I went with Kevin immediately. I thought, okay, where's the sonar? The sonar can see through that. Where's your sonar? Get the sonar down there. And they never did. They just went on with the show. And I was like, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Bernie said I was yelled at the TV. Yeah. <laughs> it could be, it was too muddy even for the sonar to work. Yeah, maybe. Maybe too much, too much sediment, too, and water too much stuff it. between me and the wall, or you know whatever. Or they may not even have said there's a chamber there. They may just think it's a, it's an eight inch hole. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hard but to say. Yeah, uh, I, I think my heart sunk. If, if it was me, I'd dump some of that stuff in you to make water settle and go back in a week. Yes, I think I would too. And maybe they do. I mean, we don't know. Mm -hmm. I did notice another picture that I don't think I captured a screenshot of. But it shows the drill rig moved back away, kind of they, like they backed it up towards Smith's Cove, mm -hmm. away from the garden shaft. And, and you see there's a casing still in the ground over where this 24.5 is. Mm -hmm. You can see the casing still there. And that now the, the drill rig has been backed away from it, uh, going more towards Smith's Cove. So is it possible that they did put a sonar or a camera I, th I think I think they leave those casings there for certain holes for, you know, they just don't pull them right up. I think, I think they leave them there to determine that they're not going to want to go down there further or they need that casing somewhere else Yeah, or both. Yep. Yeah. I was so, my heart sank when, when it, when it was dark, cause I had, I so wanted to see, and I think I even talked in discord last night with everybody saying, Oh, I think they're going to show us down inside there. We're going to see pictures of it. And eh, nope, we didn't see anything. And I'm, ah, yeah. It filled ah. up kind of quick with water too, didn't it? Yeah. And, get, and as Steve said, he could see the water down mm -hmm. there. And how what? deep was he down with the camera? Uh, seven, seven, seven point five meters. Seven point four, which is so they didn't go to the bottom of the casing. Right. They didn't go down one hundred and six feet. Right. They went down roughly about twenty five feet, which is guess what? Sea level. At sea level, yeah. You know the money pit elevation is around twenty eight to thirty feet. So you know depending where you are and depending on the tides and the time of year and the moon. You're going to get a fluctuation in the tides and the sea level, but it's just kind of coincidental that, uh, you know, the water is at, at roughly at sea level. Yeah. So was that a tunnel that was flooded by a flood tunnel and still open to the ocean and they, did, and they didn't block them off? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Could be. But I, I really, uh, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, yeah, once the sediment uh, settles, they would have a better shot at it. And I yep. think that's probably why. Uh, they left the casing in there, and I'm hoping so. It looked like, from the pictures, it looked like they they left the casing. And I, I'm just mm -hmm. scrolling through my pictures here, and I don't, I don't think I captured one of it, but I did see uh, a picture of that, and they had moved away, and the casing was still in the ground. So, yep. yeah, they were uh, going to pull it up and let them drop the camera down. Yeah, hope is not lost yet on that uh, on that thing. So we'll see. Uh, if they actually hopefully it wasn't hopefully it wasn't a great big huge piece of timber and all they're going to do is drop that camera <laughs> into a hole they bored into a big piece of timber yeah yeah and you wouldn't see anything anyway you see anything you anyway the wood all the way around right mm -hmm. so but again i i i don't know i i'm i'm thinking about a chamber i i'm i'm liking the idea Seven of feet a tall underground like that 
I mean, unless you're digging a, a coal mine or some kind of a mine or something that needs, you know, you're following a vein somewhere. But as far as I know, there's no significant gold deposit on that island. There's no coal deposit on that island. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm thinking, uh, what cat point cats point up? Uh, what did cats say? Uh, it's like uh, entering something like a box. It's like mm -hmm. they entered something like a box. Yes, yes, yep. that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's uh, maybe that is a chamber, and that's one of the walls around it. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. And if you go back to what Char, uh, Doug said when he was talking mm -hmm. about the uh, John Smith house, mm -hmm. he pointed right up there on the hill and yep. said, "Back behind the garden shaft was where the the money pit was." Mm -hmm. He said that. I'm gonna get that clip. I'm gonna actually get that clip and I'll share it next week mm -hmm. where, where he said that. If you haven't seen it, um, but. I, there is a there is a light, Bill. There is a light on the camera, but the light was not strong enough to see through the murk. The murk. Yeah, the light was on. The light the light was on, but as soon as it hit the water, just everything right. went black. Because Steve yeah. even said when he goes to lower it down, the light's on. Right. Yep. Um, somebody said you can change the delineation of the uh, the sonar so they can see through some of that. I think or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, certainly you can. It's just a matter of it's you know you're trying to see through molasses or dirty water. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, but you've seen down before, bo yeah, the below when they um, Rick's quest overrides sonar. Yeah. Oh, uh, once a second. Yeah. Looks. Oh, here it is. Gain could be adjusted on the sonar to read through muddy water and get a good image. So I don't know. I, I don't know. <coughs> but I'm. That's that's where I was with it. I I was thinking, man, seven feet. That's that's more like a chamber than a tunnel. That's, in my, in my that's extremely purposeful. That's, yeah. that's not somebody trying to get from point A to point B. No. No. Um, uh, I asked Emma about gold possibility being neutral deposits on your show a few weeks ago during a phone call, and she said possibly, but she couldn't confirm it. Yep. So, yeah. Um, they probably get some samples of the water. Yes, I think they sample all of them now. I think that now that they found that uh, gold content in some of the water, I think they sample them all. Quite yeah, honestly. And then they want them che checked for the palladium now too. Yeah. They, yes. Exactly. Palladium mm -hmm. is another thing they check for yep. on a regular on a regular basis now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Anyway, so yeah, when they put that camera down, that camera never got outside of the uh, the uh, casing. Remember they no. said they're just going to raise the casing, you know, four or five feet or whatever, and then the, hopefully right. it would drop out the bottom. Right. They never even got the camera through the casing. Right. There's nothing to see. Yeah, and that just, man, my heart sank. I, I know I said that already, but oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it did. Really, really did. All right. So, you know what we got next time? <laughs> next time on the Curse of Oak Island next week. Uh, we see the uh, Irving, and I showed the crane earlier. We know that it was sitting there on June 21st. It was sitting there. at the. They were putting it together um, with all the booms and everything that go on it. So we see the Dumas. Well, yes, we do see Dumas trailers yep. showing up at the island. We're going to start now. This is just going to be the start of the, uh, the uh, continuation of the garden shaft down to 98 feet it'll just be the beginning so we won't get anything right away on that but we'll get to, at least we know that they're out there and they're doing it um then uh, here's another look at that and there's that tree somebody mentioned they need to get rid of that tree well they didn't pull the stump out they should should have got cut the, stump the tree down <laughs> they cut the tree down but they didn't get the stump out so it's brought, brought one of those 50 guys back and told them to cut down the tree <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh, maybe they'll move the water testing equipment to the island for quicker. Ooh, wouldn't that be something good? Uh, that'd be that'd be a good idea. Yeah, good idea. Uh, the giggle. Mm. Um, so here's the here's that what I was calling a latrine or a privy uh area that you can see they have expanded on now, and they're over into the other side, which is where Helen made that comment about in her forty years of field work, she had never seen anything hidden like that or covered up like that. Yeah, buried that deep. Yeah. Buried that deep. Yep. Exactly. Uh, here, I just grabbed the shot of the, uh, the, the, obviously during that time we have seen that the, uh, um, the, the, um, they were pumping, they were pumping out the, uh, the, the, 
the swamp at that point uh, when I was there that the pumps were running uh, and doing that. And then we got a look. Now, this one doesn't, too. You had a much better picture that you caught uh, than the one that I caught. But you remember when they showed for next week, they showed the upcoming episode and they showed them lifting the lid off of the um, off of the uh, garden shaft, the lid that they put down it. Ryan, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get down that garden shaft. Yes, indeed. Uh, and here's the lid coming off the garden shaft right there. And uh, lo and behold, I think it's full of water. It looks like muddy water to me. Yeah. This picture doesn't. The light, the light doesn't well. go down the hole. Yeah. Light stops. Yeah. So I think it's full of water. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see. Uh, so, and so Gary, uh, Gary finds something that he's uh, very interested in. And then uh, um, uh, Carmen ends up out there at the island and Carmen's taking a look at something there and he makes a comment about it being very old. Uh, so we don't know what that is yet and we don't know where they found it. So um, let's see. Oh, oh, Gary and Marty found the encrusted flintlock on lot eight. So it wasn't on lot five. It was on lot eight. Oh, thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Linda went and dug that information out somewhere. She has an archive of all this kind of stuff that she, <laughs> how she finds it so quick. I have no idea. Um, but lot eight was where they found that encrusted flintlock uh, firing mechanism. That's very cool. So, uh, yeah, so uh, next week uh, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. Uh, the arrival of Dumas. What's the uh, what's the show called next week? I forgot what the name of it was. Something okay, Linda, about, now's your chance. You had sheer, them all up the other day. Sheer something, sheer something. I forgot which one it was. Sheer luck? I don't know. Something like that. It took forever to find it, she said. <laughs> I guess when somebody finds a pair of shears. Yeah, a pair of shears or something. Or they did like find that. those what Spanish shears? Yeah, years yep. ago. Yep, those are those were in the interpretive center in mm -hmm. the uh, so-called museum. That hopefully will be back up and running next year, uh, and everybody will get to go and check out those things over there uh, again. Sheer mystery. Sheer mystery. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what do they find. Maybe that's what Gary's holding in his hands. Could be. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe Gary finds another pair of shears. <laughs> Cat, you and I think alike too much, and that scares me. No. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, those old shears, yeah. So it could be. could be from that. So good stuff coming up for next week's show, and I'm looking forward to it. This was a good one. I and, It was. And the clues, like I said, the little clues that they talk about in here, um, quite often we get little uh, bits mm -hmm. and pieces of information. Uh, yeah, Sheer Mystery is December, and December 5th is um, Muon the Horizon. So we're going to get more information from the Muon technology. I assume that's what that means. Um, so that'll, <coughs> that'll be a fun show, too. So, yeah. So what did you guys, uh, anybody else uh, get anything else that they took from last night's episode that you want to you wanna bring up real quick? Um, I, you know, again, I thought it was good stuff. Um, I'm glad to see that wood. And I, that, that, that was probably my biggest takeaway was the piece of wood that they drilled down into seven and a half feet, seven and a half feet of a tunnel yeah. or a chamber. That's amazing. So, yeah. Not only that, just to get a, a piece of timber down there, that's seven and a half feet long. Yeah. Try and get that around. Try try and get that around a three or four foot corner, right? <laughs> exactly. So you know, so that takes us. You know, and remember how they talked about the fact that the um, the the baby blob. They had the blob, and they had the baby blob, and that's where they were getting their largest gold and and um and, gold and uh, silver yep. silver concentrations in the water testing. That's where they were getting their most concentrations from. So. That says that the garden or the actual treasure chamber should be over there. And the wood that was tested by Emma that was from 24.5 or 25.5 and 26, well, 26.5 and then on the other side too, down in that baby blob, mm -hmm. those were tested and they didn't find any gold or silver, but they did find. Did they that, test um, any of those boreholes up on the other side of the garden shaft? 
I what, you mean water testing, you mean? Yeah, for gold and silver. I would think that they did, but they haven't told us anything about it yet. Yeah. Well, we know they haven't tested D5 N24.5 because they just bored that one. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we'll hear about that because I'd love to find out if there is any gold or, you know, content in the water up there. Um, oh, thank you, Dean. I appreciate that very much. That's very nice of you. Um, and we'd love to interact with the chat. That's why I love to ask you guys questions. Was there anything else that you saw? The Chapel Vault Dimensions? I don't remember. 12? Was it 12, 12 by 10? 12 by 14, I think. Somebody told us last, last, last week, and I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> good memory is just really short. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Linda, that's what I remember. They told us before that they test all of them now mm -hmm. uh, for gold, and, and they test the water. So Yeah. And um, I expect they're going to test that wood that they brought up. Yeah, I would think so. That seven and a half foot piece is going to be interesting. Um, yeah, I feel like the Dunfield stuff completely changed everything that they had documented. He made a mess of the whole island. Uh, yeah, he, he kind of did. Um, Dunfield had a plan. You know, unfortunately, he kind of, um, the things that he did down in Smith's Cove and he did in the Money Pit really yeah. did kind of make a mess of a lot of stuff. Um, there's so many that's, things. That's not where Dunfield dug, though. No. And down that deep, he would be outside because Dunfield dug a cone, right? Yes. Right? So when you get down 100 feet outside deck, if you're not in that original 90 feet or whatever it was across at the top, mm -hmm. everything outside that is untouched. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it was only yeah, it was only about yep. 10 feet in diameter at the bottom of the yep. hole. Um, when it was caving in, everything was caving in and everything. And then he pushed it out. That was one of the things that I had said about that, also the, um, the lead cross. Uh, if you remember when Rick and, and Gary found the lead cross down mm -hmm. in Smith's Cove, um, Smith's Cove had been churned, churned, and churned over that yep. that, all that dirt so many times. Uh, and then Gary found the lead cross with, it was just a few inches underneath the rocks and the sediment that was there. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that it got bulldozed there from somewhere else? Yes, it is very likely. Uh, it's also possible it washed out from 100 feet beyond where they had the coffer dam yep exactly right the sea's gonna wash that stuff up and in yep so we simply don't know unfortunately we just simply don't know exactly where it came from is the hole with the seven foot yes. wood the same as the one they can yes yeah they just pulled the casing back up a bit hoping they could get out the bottom into that right what they think might be a chamber right exactly but they didn't um, even get through the casing yeah the water was, I mean, that, oh, I was so, I was so, I know Eva, Eva sent me an email. We were talking about that and I said, yeah, I know I was too. I was so disappointed, um, you know, when they didn't find anything down there. So, um, but anyway, all right. Well, that's what I have for tonight. Anything else, uh, Tom, that you wanted to add? Nope. For last night's I'm show? good. I'm Folks, good. if you would, please hit that uh, like button before you go. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really helps us out to have those subscriptions. It doesn't cost anything. You do have to have an account, obviously, uh, for a YouTube account or a Gmail account or whatever to be able to do that. Uh, but, you know, hit that like button for us. We uh, It does help us out quite a bit. Unfortunately, all the chat messages that we get during the live broadcast don't reflect after it's over. They start adding up after the show is over. That's when they start to, to uh, accumulate. But uh, uh, anyway, we do appreciate that very much. And thank you for those who did the, uh, the super chats tonight. I, I greatly appreciate that. Next week, we're going to be talking. Tom and I will probably have Colin. I don't know. I reached out to Colin. We're going to see if Colin will join us. If not, Seth will be coming back too. Uh, we love having Seth Looking on the show. Looking forward to having Seth back. Yep. And yep. Colin. And Colin, and uh, maybe even Jeff Babineau somewhere along the way. We'll get back, him back on here mm -hmm. as well. So, But we really appreciate each and every one of you being here with us tonight. Uh, and that's why that's why we love doing this live. I could do a recorded show. I don't want to do it that way. I love doing it live because we get to interact with all of you. And you get to see all our mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And when I make them, <laughs> I'm trying to find something or whatever. So, Try to pronounce a name or a word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. We really do hope that each and every one of you have Thanksgiving tomorrow. You have a great, great Thanksgiving. And remember to be thankful of all the things in your life, the good things in your life. I'm very thankful that I have this show and I have Tom as a friend and Linda and Jan and Colin and Seth and all of them. And we get to do this every week for you guys. So, all right. Catch you next time right here on the J Free 906 podcast. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>